Alright, good morning all of you. Check. So, last session we talked about uh, the concept of DNA fingerprinting and the Human Genome Project. What we have now is a very beautiful logic. What are the biotechnological applications for human health? Now, as far as human health is concerned, one nice example we have is about insulin. Insulin, we all know, is secreted by the beta cells of islets of Langer hands of pancreas and whenever sugar is consumed, insulin converts glucose into glucagon in the liver and the muscle cells. And if there is a deficiency of insulin, it results in a disease called as diabetes mellitus. So, Jinko diabetes tha, how could you treat them? So it was first and foremost in 1921, two Canadian scientists, Frederick Banting and Charles Baer, successfully purified insulin from a dog's pancreas and Banting and Baer gave this insulin to people with diabetes and found their blood sugar level tremendously decreased and sugar got converted into glucagon. And later on, Many pharmaceutical companies all over the world started producing insulin from pancreas of cattle and pigs. Cattle were cut for consumption of beef. Pigs were cut for consumption of ham. And sir, unke pancreas se insulin ko isolate karke, purify karke, this insulin was given to people suffering from diabetes mellitus. And for Many years, it was animal insulin which was given to people suffering from diabetes and later on, there was a nice idea, why don't we use genetically engineered insulin which can be produced in an unlimited quantity. So sir, this case, genetically effective insulin was then put forward as was suggested. There were a few things about animal insulin Animal insulin caused a lot of allergies to people. If people took animal insulin, to say allergic reaction at the time. And it was thought, why don't we orally give tablets of insulin? Can you give orally insulin, sir? You no, know, that is not possible because insulin is chemically a protein. And as soon as you take insulin tablet, HCL in the stomach will break down protein so that will not get absorbed, protein, insulin will get digested completely before it is absorbed from the intestine. So, insulin orally ne ne sakte se, uh, unke injections sir, unse allergic reactions kuch logo ko hote se. Then, it was a beautiful logic of making of insulin by bioreactors using biotechnology. Sabse pehle, let's see insulin banta kaise hai. Insulin consists of three chains. And sabse pehle, jab beta cells mein insulin banta hai, you have an A chain, you have a C chain, and you have a B chain. A chain, C chain, and B chain, this is called pre-pro-insulin. So what is this three chain insulin called? Pre-pro-insulin. And then later on, between the A chain and B chain are established disulfide bonds. And when the disulfide bonds ban jate hai, we all know proteins are connected by disulfide bonds. So A chain or B chain ke beech mein disulfide bond bana ke, pre-pro-insulin became pro-insulin. And then in the last step, the C chain is an X extra peptide. It's an extra chain not required. So C chain is cut off and removed and what is left behind is A chain and B chain with disulfide bond. C chain nickel chuka hai. That is called as insulin and this is the insulin which is required for people. So compared to what is formed earlier, A, C and B, what does final insulin have? A and B. C is removed and between A and B is established disulfide bonding. So, first of all, an American company 
in 1936 in an attempt to provide protection against smallpox. So first vaccine was made against smallpox. General had noticed that milkmaids who had contracted cowpox seemed to be resistant to smallpox. So sir, uh, what did Jenner find out? There were many milkmaids who used to milk cows. Or cows a disease was called as cowpox. And that virus went into women who were milking them. Of course, cowpox doesn't affect humans, but cowpox belongs to the same family as smallpox. So if someone has cowpox infection, then they have cowpox with smallpox against the immunity. And he realized that we can have antibodies against a microorganism and Edward Jenner made the first successful vaccine against smallpox. Today, with the help of that beautiful discovery that Jenner had done, we have been able to eradicate completely cowpox and smallpox. Smallpox ke ek bhi case dunya mein nahi hai. All the smallpox cases have been eradicated with the help of the first vaccine made by Edward Jenner in 1976. And today, how is the vaccine made? Make a medium and grow the pathogenic organism. Say a PB bacteria ya coronavirus. So sir, usko aap ek nutrition medium pe usko banai hai. Let it culture and form a colony of the bacteria and sir then inactivate the organism so it is inactivated either by chemicals like sodium hypochlorite or by heating we will inactivate it means the microorganism all the enzymes inside are inactivated the microorganism cannot multiply but surface protein called antigen is still there and this antigen ke saath we add an adjuvant a chemical add kiya jata hai adjuvant which will increase your body's immune response so adjuvant add karenge to T lymphocyte recognizing antigen chances will increase T lymphocyte will shoot out more antibodies and that is why adding of the adjuvant it will bolster your immune response and will increase your immune response and uske saath it dilute it in other words something like distilled water is added so that a proper volume of the vaccine is made and this vaccine is then given to humans today we have so many vaccines being made uh, at birth you are given BCG vaccine which is against tuberculosis then you are given BPT vaccine, diphtheria, pertussis, titanus vaccine. Then you are given MMR, measles, mumps, rubella vaccine. And then you are given hepatitis B vaccine. And then you are given titanus toxoid, other titanus vaccines are given. And you have a universal health program which is organized by the World Health Organization. In the universal vaccination program, children are given vaccines against all these dangerous diseases. So that's the concept of vaccine. And then, sir, we go into a fantastic concept, the cups of this chapter, something called as gene therapy. The question is, is it possible to treat genetic diseases Genetic diseases result from phenotype caused by mutant gene and somatic cell. आपके body के somatic cell में एक gene का अगर mutation हो गया, तो it will change the phenotype of the person. Genotype changes, so phenotype changes, and that causes a genetic disease. Theoretically, two of the gene therapies are possible: somatic cell therapy and germline cell therapy. Somatic cell therapy is a therapy in which somatic cells are modified genetically to correct the genetic defect. So, after somatic cell therapy means the child is already growing, उसके body के सर somatic cell लेके उसके अंदर gene therapy करो and change the genetics of that cell and put it back inside. That is called as somatic cell therapy. But sir. Somatic cell therapy will change only a few of your somatic cells. But if you actually know that father and mother are having a disease, 
and genetically it can be passed on to the next generation so un parents ka aap in vitro fertilization karo do an IVF make a test tube baby take the egg from the mother the sperm from the father fertilize it in a test tube to form a zygote and in this there is a modification of the original genetic makeup so zygote ke andar hi gene therapy kar lo once the gene has been modified the mutated gene is made normal again now the zygote is put into the fallopian tube and when the child will be born he or she will not have this genetic defect because this is something called as germline cell therapy तो आपके बॉडी के सेल्स को मॉडिफाई किए जाते हैं दैट इज सोमैटिक सेल थेरेपी लिमिटेड सक्सेस बट इफ यू डू अ जोमलाइन सेल थेरेपी तो जाइपोर्ट लेवल के अंदर ही आपने जीन्स मॉडिफाई कर लिया एंड दैट विल ब्यूटिफुली हेल्प द प्रोसेस ऑफ द चाइल्ड डेवलपिंग विदाउट द जेनेटिक डिसऑर्डर एंड सर वी कैन क्योर डिजीजेस लाइक डायबिटीज कैंसर एंड वेरी अदर डिजीजेस by a germline cell therapy or a somatic cell therapy so some examples of genes that can be used by gene therapy tissue plasminogen activator tpa which is used to prevent or reverse blood clots excellent medicine for the treatment of a heart attack sir so, the heart attack aapke coronary arteries ke andar arteriosclerosis hai फैट का एक ब्लॉक आ चुका है एंड प्लेटलेट से फैट ब्लॉक भी है फिर क्लॉटिक ब्लॉक एंड विल फॉर्म अ क्लॉट तो आपके आर्टरी के अंदर वो क्लॉट फॉर्म हो जाएगा एंड ब्लड के नॉट रीच द मेट्रिकल एंड यू विल हैव मायोकार्डियल इन्फॉक्शन और हार्ट अटैक तो एनी पर्सन कंप्लेन ऑफ एंजाइना चेस्ट पेन मीन ही इज हेडिंग टूवर्ड द हार्ट अटैक Straight away, give him a beautiful chemical which is made with the help of genes and bacteria, and those genes have made a protein called as tissue plasminogen activator (TPA). A tissue plasminogen activator will immediately reverse the block. It will remove the platelet plug, and heart attack is prevented by that. Then you have human growth hormone. produced with the help of genes and e coli bacteria that is used to treat pituitary dwarfism so dwarf bachcho ko human growth hormone jo bacteria ki madad se genetically banaye jaate hain wo diye jaate hain and it will reverse dwarfism they will have normal height then tissue growth factor beta tgfb tissue growth factor beta promotes new blood vessels and epidermal growth and is useful in wound healing and burns so kisi ko agar skin burn hai 70 80% burn hue hai then you give them injections of tissue growth factor beta isse naye naye blood vessels aur nayi skin aa jati hai and will help in healing and wound healing and burns human blood clotting factor a to treat hemophilia so if you remember hemophilia is a x linked disorder due to genetic defect x linked or y rather uh, x linked uh, clotting factor 8 or clotting factor 9 is deficient mostly clotting factor 8 is deficient give the patient injections of clotting factor 8 and treat their hemophilia or human insulin jubilin to treat insulin dependent diabetes mellitus किसी को अगर इंसुलिन देना पड़ता है राधा दिन गिविन देर इंजेक्शन मेड फ्रॉम काउस और पिक फैक्ट्रिया लाइक वी जस्ट लर्न गिव देर ज्यूम्यूलिन ह्यूमन इंसुलिन मेड विद द हेल्प ऑफ ई कोला बैक्टीरिया एंड दैट विल ट्रीट दे आर डायबिटीज डीएनए इज टू ट्रीट सिस्टिक फाइब्रोसिस सिस्टिक फाइब्रोसिस इज अ वेरी बैड जेनेटिक डिसऑर्डर जिसमें आपके लंग्स के अंदर एल्वियोलाइन के बीच में कनेक्टिव टिश्यूज ग्रो हो जाते हैं सो द रेस्पिरेटरी से टाइडल वॉल्यूम ऑफ द पर्सन बिकम रिड्यूज ही कैन नॉट ब्रीज एंड द लंग विल वेरी सुन गो इन टू अ फेलियर तो रेस्पिरेटरी कोलैप्स हो सकता है और ऐसे केसेस में डीएनए दिया जाता है DNA will break down the connective tissue and treat cystic fibrosis. And 
recombinant vaccine such rather bovine growth hormone to increase dairy and cattle yield. Uh, take bovine growth hormone. We have human growth hormone and similarly we can make bovine cattle growth hormone. It is given to cows and buffaloes and their muscle mass will increase. So when they are slaughtered, more muscle mass is available for consumption and more milk is being produced by these cows and buffaloes. So that is bovine growth hormone. And then recombinant vaccine for prophylaxis of human and animal viral diseases like hepatitis B vaccine. So hepatitis B vaccine aajkal banaya jata hai which is made by DNA recombinant technology. And genetically engineered bacteria and microorganisms in industries are used for production of industrial enzymes, citric acid and ethanol. So citric acid, ethanol and industrial enzymes are being used with the help of genetically engineered bacteria and genetically engineered bacteria can accelerate degradation of oil pollutants or certain chemicals in toxic waste. Sir, this is a very big problem, oil pollution. So, sir, when oil is extruded from say, Bombay High, and the Arabic Sea, Arabian Sea, or say from open countries, Middle East, when oil is extruded from the Middle East, then tankers are extruded from the ships mein, to export the oil to other countries. Many times in the past, these oil tankers have exploded or something has gone wrong and oil has spilled all over the sea. A very famous incident was the boss of oil in Brazil se US leke ja rahe the, and the oil tanker had a leak and oil got completely spread over the Pacific Ocean covering thousands of miles. Now the problem of oil is oil does not mix with water. As a matter of fact, oil forms a layer on the surface of the water and will not allow oxygen to enter inside and lot of fish and other aquatic life will die in the absence of oxygen. So, in the time of this oil will literally burn kiya jata tha. They would burn the oil. And now, they have found this fantastic bacteria called as Pseudomonas putida. And Pseudomonas putida is a bacteria which is called as a superbug. And superbug, Pseudomonas putida, if you genetically modify it and put it on oil, it will digest away the oil. So oil spills ko digest kiya jata hai with the help of Pseudomonas putida, which is a superbug used for oil remediation for treatment of oil spills all over the world. So these are excellent applications of gene therapy and then sir, we have a wonderful disease treatment of gene therapy. If a person is born with a hereditary disease, can a corrective therapy be used for this disease? Gene therapy can correct a genetic disease. So, what is the definition of a gene therapy? Gene therapy is a collection of methods that allows the correction of a gene defect that has been diagnosed in a child or in an embryo. Developing embryo or newborn child can be a genetic defect, so we can do the gene therapy. Ke madad se treat now, sir, genes are inserted into a person's cells and tissues to treat a disease and delivery of a normal gene into the individual or the embryo to take over the function and compensate for a non-functional genus job. Kisi bachche ke andar koi gene function nahi kar ra hai, so with gene therapy, uske andar ek normal gene dal diya jata hai, so normal gene will take over the function of the defective gene. An excellent example, the first chemical gene therapy was given in 1990 to a four-year-old girl from Sri Lanka called Ashanti Disilva. She was born with an autosomal recessive metabolic disorder called as SCID, Severe Combined Immunodeficiency Enzyme, 
SCID is manifest as a lack of enzyme adenosine deaminase ADA, which is an enzyme crucial for degradation of toxin, which accumulate in the TMD lymphocytes, causing their degradation. So, sir, what is severe combined immunodeficiency disease? SCID disease, which was there in the four-year-old girl called Ashanti Rizalva. Sir, aapke T lymphocytes recognize antigen, aapke B lymphocytes shoot out antibody, so they are doing immunity, but aapke T lymphocytes and B lymphocytes just antigen recognize kar rahe, antibodies recognize kar rahe, to unke under cellular metabolism se Toxins बनते हैं and these toxins will accumulate in the T lymphocytes and B lymphocytes and toxins will degrade the T and B lymphocytes. तो toxins T और B lymphocytes को degrade कर देते हैं and T और B lymphocytes के अंदर एक gene होता है and that gene produces an enzyme called as adenosine B amine. Adenosine B aminase नाम का एक enzyme बनता है Adenosine B aminase मेरे made with the help of a gene called as ADA gene तो ADA gene Adenosine B aminase detoxifies those toxins वो toxins को degrade कर देता है and with the help of Adenosine B aminase as the toxins are degraded T lymphocytes and B lymphocytes will remain active and they will keep on recognizing antigens and keep on shooting out antibodies. Now, this is the NAS. So, our T or B lymphocytes are active. They are recognizing antigens, forming antibodies, but toxins accumulate. And our adenosine D aminase gene, ADA gene, se, adenosine D aminase, banta hai. it will degrade the toxin and T lymphocytes, B lymphocytes remain active. Ashanti de Silva or a patient who is having SCID have a deletion of the gene for adenosine deaminase. Unke under adenosine deaminase ka gene deactivate ho jata hai or that gene is absent in birth. So what will happen? T lymphocytes, B lymphocytes will work. Unke under toxins accumulate ho ge, but because there is no adenosine deaminase, it will cause toxins to accumulate inside the T and B lymphocytes. The toxins will kill the T and B lymphocytes. So, aapke T and B lymphocytes, B lymphocytes ka count kam ho jayega. When you get an infection, anti-gel recognition nahi hoga, anti-bodies nahi banenge, means your immunity will decrease and that is called as severe combined immunodeficiency disorder, a severe combined immunodeficiency disorder, SCID in our disease is ladki ko ho jati hai. In some children, ADA deficiency can be cured by bone marrow transplantation. So, sir, you remove the bone marrow of this child which is defective or usi ka blood brother ya blood sister unka normal bone marrow dal diya jata hai. So, defective bone marrow jiske T or B lymphocytes mein ADA nahi hai, wo nikal ke brother ya sister ka normal bone marrow jisme ADA gene hai. So, adenosine DMNA gene is present, is now put in, it will produce T and B lymphocytes which are there at a, uh, with ADA gene. So, T and B lymphocytes with ADA gene is produced and a bone marrow transplantation is good. But sir, a bone marrow has a lifespan of 1 to 2 years. By the way, the bone marrow's efficiency decreases. So, sir, a bone marrow transplant can give temporary help to the child, but it's not a permanent cure. Another thing is treatment by enzyme replacement therapy in which functional ADA given is given to the patient by injection. So, our bacteria can be adenosine diaminase enzyme banao, and you give injections of adenosine diaminase, it will go in the blood, 
go in TNB lymphocytes and destroy their toxins. But sir, uh, now this is also not a 100% sure therapy because if you give injections of adenosine DMINase, we are not sure whether they are getting delivered in the target cell TNB lymphocyte can never actually adenosine DMINase pouch or any pouch or not this is not a guarantee Another excellent thing that can be done So, a step towards gene therapy now take lymphocytes from the blood of the patient and grow it in the cultural medium outside the cell So, sir, gene therapy can be done Sir, बच्चें के अंदर से T and B lymphocytes with disabled area G are taken from a child तो उसे अशांति डिसिवा का ब्लड लिया जाता है उसके अंदर T and B lymphocytes are without area G तो उसमें area G नहीं होता है Take the area G and put it into a plasmid at plasmid के अंदर area G डाल के let the bacteria with the plasmid multiply तो bacteria will multiply and the plasmid के अंदर area G will multiply and this area G adenosine diaminase G here we have it area G and this area G with the plasmid will multiply then we cut the area G and put it into a Retrovirus. Do you remember for plants, genetic engineers, agrobacterium to be patient. For animals, it is retrovirus which is used for genetic engineering in humans. So we take a retrovirus, uska DNA nikal dete hai, and uske andar ADA gene retrovirus me dal dete hai. Retrovirus में ADA gene डाल देते हैं and this retrovirus is allowed to then attack those TNT lymphocytes which were taken from the patient. तो patient के अंदर से लिए हुए T और B lymphocytes के retrovirus के अंदर डाल दिए जाते हैं. Retrovirus will insert the ADA gene. तो ADA gene इस retrovirus से T और B lymphocytes के अंदर चले जाते हैं. And these retroviruses infect these cells, transfer the ADA gene to the cell. These cells are grown in a culture media and it is given back to the child. So child ko ye wale T lymphocytes or B lymphocytes dete hai, jiske andar apne ADA gene dal diya hai. So what have we done? We have taken T and B lymphocytes out of the child. We grow ADA gene in plasmids with the bacterium E. coli. We cut the ADA gene and put it into retroviruses. Retroviruses are allowed to infect TNT lymphocytes which put the ADA gene in them and then these genes along with the bacteria, I'm sorry, along with the TNT lymphocytes are given back to the patient and this is gene therapy called as somatic gene therapy. But sir, ye excellent logic hai and you can increase the lifespan of a child by many years but you have to periodically keep on removing T and B lymphocytes out of the child with retrovirus put in the ADA gene and then keep on putting these T and B lymphocytes back into the child's body and yet periodically aapko har mahine do mahine karna padega so a permanent solution to this is if the gene is isolated from a marrow cell producing ADA gene is introduced into cell at early embryonic stages. Now you know that the parents are genetically going to pass SCID disease to the child. So child ke andar SCID disease aane wala hai. So what do you do? Take the sperm, take the egg of the parent, make a test tube baby. Uh, IVF in vitro fertilization, take the zygote, take a retrovirus with the ADA gene in it, and this retrovirus is allowed to infect the zygote. So, zygote gets the ADA gene, ajayega, which means now when the zygote will replicate, all the subsequent cells 
they have in them the ADA gene and that child will be born with the normal ADA gene and usko bada ho ke ADA adenosine diabetes bantai rahega and severe combined immunodeficiency disorder is bachche ko nahi hoga so SCID is beautifully taken care of this is germline cell therapy तो अगर हम बच्चे के लिए टी सी एल टी बिल्कुल सर निकाल के उसमें एडीए जीन डाल के बच्चे को वापस दे दैट इज सोमैटिक जीन थेरेपी और सोमैटिक सेल जीन थेरेपी अगर जाइबोट लेवल पे ही रेट्रोवायरस से एडीए ए जीन डाल दे एंड नाउ द जाइबोट की ग्रो इट टू अ बेबी विथ नॉर्मल एडिनोसिटी अमाइनेस दैट इज अ जर्मलाइन सेल थेरेपी What is this beautiful therapy by which retrovirus are used to put desired genes into human cells called as gene therapy, and this is gene therapy that we have analyzed. So I hope you understood that. We will just have a small break, and we will come back and finish off the remaining chapter. See you.